Okay, so as a bit of context, I was sent this to try it out and see how it works on Linux. So I did. So let's start off with uh, what comes in the box. And obviously there is the charger. This little thing does need power to work and unplugging it because of course I tried for science will kill it immediately. I would say I would have preferred a USB-C charging port but okay it's not that important. So this also contains various instruction booklets, obviously, a USB-C to USB-C cable, which is actually pretty good. I appreciate that they did include it in the box and it's quite a long cable reinforced at the end and um, with a nice texture between them. I did not get the impression at all that they tried to cut costs here, unlike in similar products that I've tried. It also contains a USB stick. This was unexpected actually. What was that for? So I tried to plug it in into my computer and basically it contains instructions on how to use it, some FAQs about the drivers, Macintosh and Windows troubleshooting guides, Android driver guide and so on. It even has a guide Guide video, I actually really appreciated including an USB-C with all of this info, especially because as soon as I got my setup ready, I can just delete everything and start using it for personal stuff, though it's just 500 megabytes of storage, so not that much. We do not get any Linux instruction, obviously, but firstly, we are Linux users, we don't need instructions, right? That's right. I guess. Secondly, I'll talk about drivers later on. There is a USB B to USB-C adapter. I don't need it, but again, I do appreciate them including it into the box. If your computer has no USB-C port, you will still be able to use the device out of the box, thanks to this little plug. And then finally, there is the actual dock itself. The black parts on the sides are in plastic, but the whole shell is metal or good plastic. Wow, I'm not good at this. Now that we've avoided the topic long enough, let's talk about ports. So there is a USB-C to connect it to the host device, obviously. There is a USB-C that only acts as a power output to recharge stuff. It's enough to recharge a phone, but it's not fast charging and it's definitely not enough for a laptop. I do have to point out that the first tri time I tried to connect it to a laptop, the dock started outputting noise to both the monitor and speakers but rebooting it fixed it and I could not reproduce it a second time. There is Ethernet, it has two nice LEDs that light up when I connect the cable. I'm certain there is a meaning behind the colors like green is for there is internet and yellow is for data being transferred, but sadly enough, I have literally no idea what those colors mean. You do get three monitor outputs. I do have to point out though that I only have one monitor to test this with, so I'm unable to confirm that all three work. One output is HDMI, one is DisplayPort, and one is either HDMI or DisplayPort, but not both at the same time. So if you want to try three monitors at the same time, you you will need to use both HDMI and DisplayPort cables. I did try the HDMI ports and they are both able to deliver 4K at 60 uh, Hz flawlessly. Then we have three USB 3.2, two USB 2.0 and a USB-C 3.2 and a jack audio. I would say it's a good amount of connectivity, maybe was expecting slightly more. As an example, only one USB-C output felt a bit meh. but it's it's enough to fit most use cases and you can of course also use the ports that are on the host computer as well. Host computer, that brings me to drivers. Is there any driver for this thing? So firstly, let me clarify one thing. This is a Linux channel. I don't have Windows nor Macintosh on any of my devices, so I will not talk about compatibility there at all. So let's talk Linux. But I will start with a different kind of Linux. Let's talk Android. I have three Android devices and the idea to be able to connect them to the dock and my monitor is, I have to admit, pretty appealing. 
However, this is not plug and play. Android support requires you to install an application called Display Link Presenter made by Display Link that has to be in the background for the whole thing to work. This is not Minisopur's fault, but the app is uh, the reviews on the Play Store give it 2.9 stars, which is pretty low, and the amount of 1 stars is higher than the amount of 5 stars. Uh, it did work okay on my phone, I'm not enthusiastic about the result, but it did not work at all on my tablet. It just mirrors the screen in a rather uninteresting way, but according to some reviews you can use an application like Second Screen to change the resolution. Finally, it seems like the DRM protected content like Netflix won't display on this monitor. None of this, again, is Minisopur's fault but nonetheless, I have to point that out. Linux-wise, everything was a plug and play for me. I did not install any driver or such, and I had no issue. And to be honest, that's what I expected. Now, there is no mention of Linux support on the little instruction manual nor in the USB stick. However, there is something on the website. This seems to be thanks to the fact that the Display Link driver, which Minisopuru asks for install, is available on Ubuntu as well. I guess that by Ubuntu it means you can kind of get it anywhere on Linux. The Display Link software says that it's an application to combine our latest driver with features that streamline the setup of multiple displays up to 4K. So maybe it's more useful if I had multiple monitors. I'm still not sure on what it would offer that KD system settings don't though. Honestly, I'm fine with everything working out of the box. So what what the uh what did I use it for again? <laughs> okay, so I found a pretty cool use case for this little device. As you might know, I have a lot of devices around. I have my main K-Focus computer over there, my secondary Dell XPS, I have a Steam Deck currently over there, I have a phone, a tablet, and so on. If I put all the important connectivity stuff on the dock, given that it's connected to the host system only through a simple USB-C, what I can do is unplug that cable whenever and attach it to any of my device, and then immediately I will have mouse, monitor, keyboard, audio, ethernet, webcam, input, microphone, all transferred to that device. This is a big deal for convergency. If I want to play some video games, I can just attach the Steam Deck and boom, done. It's just one cable. If I want to work on a file on my laptop, then I just plug in that laptop to the USB-C and I'm right on top of that. It's pretty cool, and given that it supports Android as well, so the support is a bit wonky, but again, I don't think it's their fault. I can also just attach the USB-C to my phone and uh, the screen gets mirrored uh, to the display. This is probably the least useful and not really exploring Android's convergency cap capabilities, but maybe with some tinkering there is a way to get those as well, I don't know. Given that all of the above mentioned devices only have one HDMI output or less, it's also great to know that if I were to buy a secondary monitor, then I would be able to use that as well flawlessly on my devices, still with a simple plug and play. Which means that this whole video and in general my entire life has been relying on this little deck which is currently over there under my table. And it just works, I had no issues whatsoever with it and of course I will let you price considerations you do them. I, I don't know how much you would value such device but I can just confirm that whatever they claim will do, it actually does, which, which is great. <laughs>